return from VFC archery. So uh, in this next uh, year, I'm going to be working on uh, a number of horn bows, close to Turkish horn bow, as I can come. Um, I have successfully made one before. I don't classify myself as being an expert horn bow maker. I think that takes many, many years, if not a lifetime, to do. It is not something for the faint of heart. I would suggest that you would have experience uh, making bows of different types, at least laminated bows maybe to start with, self bows, sinew back bows. Um, I've made all of those. I eventually gravitated towards the horn bow and I, the Turkish horn bow is the one that I prefer because it's short and powerful. It's, it's around 41 inches which is really short for any horn bow. It's below, you know, the range of Turkish horn bows, which was roughly from around 42 inches knock to knock to maybe 48 or 50, again, give or take. Uh, but this is very, very short. And uh, I spliced it together last year. We're going to splice together two more this year. I've cut the, cut the pieces and I've steam bent them, but I'll show them to you and then uh, I'll give you a bit of a close-up of this. So first of all, this bow, as you can tell, it's spliced together. So four inches roughly from here to here. This is approximately one inch by slightly over an inch. Then we've got the maple limbs and when we get to the saya, they are made out of maple. Typically they would have used mulberry or a little bit lighter wood, but I used maple. Maple's not that much heavier than uh, uh, mulberry. And you can see the splice there. This has also been sanded somewhat too, so it's not uh, uh, finished in any way. And you can see here how the elevation of the saya as it was spliced in gives you that higher piece on top of the bow because of course the horn is going to be on this part of the bow, the sinew is going to be on this part of the bow. It's, at this point it's not that crucial that everything be measured right down to the millimeter. You're going to sand it and, and you're going to have horn and sinew. And, uh, but I think uh, it's kind of important and I did in this case sand down <clears throat> some of this because uh, it probably used to be, I don't know, maybe about another eighth of an inch to, a, not a quarter inch, but an eighth of an inch thicker. So this is the end result, at least of that first stage where you're gluing together uh, the wood. And you might wonder how it's glued together. It's hide glue that I've used. So that's what's holding these pieces together, hide glue. And you'll see when we do one, we will clamp and put the hide glue and we'll clamp and we'll let it dry. It dries very quickly. Um, you know, hide glue is also what we're going to use for the sinew. Uh, it's pretty universal. I'm also going to use um, a glue from, uh, it's, a, it's a fish bla bladder, not the bladder as in, you know, to urinate, but the bladder to support the fish as it's floating. We're going to use that as well in the glue. That's probably a little bit more important, I believe, for the horn side as opposed to the sinewed side. We're not going to worry too much about that. Um, so, um, Vern, VFC Archery and stick around for this series. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it.